Hello everyone, welcome back to Map with Allison. Today we're working on our integration series, so we're going to be talking about washer method. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We know how to find the volume of a solid region by using disk method. So let's go ahead and talk about what that looks like. If I were to literally slice this, so I'm going to slice it right there, I would end up with a circle, right? And we can find the radius of the circle, and that's going to be between the x-axis all the way up to where we hit our function. So here the radius is going to be x squared because our function right here, f of x, is equal to x squared. Did not write that down, but now you know. So here, in order to find the area, we get pi times the radius squared, and here we can plug in our radius. So we get x to the power of 4. But that only represents one tiny slice of it. So in order to get all the slices, what we do is we take the integral between 0 to 2. This means we're taking all of those tiny little slices and we're adding them together. So we get at pi times x to the power of 4 dx. So this right here is going to give us the volume of that 3D shape. So here we could work it out. So we get pi times x to the power of 5 divided by 5 between 0 and 2, in, when, in which we end up with 32 pi divided by 5. And that right there represents the volume of this entire shape. But the question is, what if our region had a hole in it? So here I drew out the 2D version. So we have the fourth root of x and we have x. And here, if we were to revolve that around the x-axis, so we took our shape and we circled it all the way around, here we would have on the outside, which looks like a nice bowl, but on the inside, we would have a hole. So right here, if I were to take a slice where this circle is, we would have a bigger circle, right? And we would have a smaller circle inside of it. The big circle represents this whole thing right here. That goes along the outside. The smaller circle represents this right here, which goes until we hit that function, which is x. So let's go ahead and talk about how we can find the area of this region, because now we're only finding the area of this, because there's a hole in the center. So here what we're going to do is we're going to separate. So first I have my big circle, and I'm going to go ahead and find the area of that big circle. So my radius is going to be from the x-axis all the way up to our top function, and our top function is right here. It's going to be the fourth root of x. So the area of this circle is going to be pi times r squared. So it's going to be pi times, and instead of the fourth root, when we square that, we get the square root of x. Now let's go ahead and take our smaller circle. So here we have the smaller circle. The radius of that is going to be between the x-axis all the way up to our shorter function. And our shorter function is going to be x. So here we have a radius of x. So area is equal to pi times radius squared. And so here we end up with x squared. So how do we get the area between these two circles? Well, we take the big area, so we get pi times the square root of x, and we should just subtract off that little area. So that's going to be pi times x squared. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. I can take out that pi, and we get the square root of x minus x squared. And then I'm going to rewrite it again so we can really see what's going on here. We took the fourth root of x, and we squared it and we took our function x and we squared it. And this only represents the area of one of those slices, and we want to add up the area of every single one of those slices. And so by definition, that's the integral. So we get the volume is equal to pi times, we're doing this all the way between 0 and 1, because that's where our functions intersect. That's where they cross over. This value right here is going to be at 1. So that's why we're integrating between 0 and 1. And now we're going to go ahead and subtract. So we get the square root of x minus x squared, dx. So let's go ahead and rewrite this so I can see power rule. And now we can go ahead and actually integrate. So here we have pi, and we're going to take the antiderivative. So that becomes x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves minus x to the power of 3 divided by 3 between 0 and 1. So here I'm going to go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. And then, you know, when you plug in 0, you just get 0, so minus 0. So here we can rewrite this as pi times so when we divide by a fraction, we multiply by it flips. So that becomes 2 thirds minus 1 third. And so here we get, that's 1 third, so pi over 3 or pi times 1 third, you know, however you want to write it. But that right there is going to represent our volume. And the volume, remember, is only going to be in this region, right? Because we have a huge hole in the middle. So this triangle in between represents the hole. Here we have the official definition. So let f and g be continuous functions, that makes sense, with f being greater than g, which is also greater than 0, on some interval a, b. Let r be the region bounded between f of x, g of x, and our bounds x equals 0 and x equals b. When r is revolved around the x-axis, the volume of the resulting solid of revolution is, and this is exactly what we just developed. 
We have the pi on the outside because area, you know, you have to have pi. And we take the larger radius, so that's going to be big R, the larger radius squared, and we subtract off the smaller radius squared. So let's go ahead and talk about when we do this with y. So we have y equals x, y equals 2x, um, y is equal to 6, and we're revolving around the y-axis. So of course we're going to go ahead and draw it first. Let's go ahead and draw y equals x. So that is going to look something like that. And here we can go ahead and draw out y equals 2x, which is going to be a bit more steeper than our function. And let's go ahead and pretend that this right here is um, y is equal to 6. So let's go ahead and find the region that we're actually revolving. And that's going to be between these two functions, right? So what's happening is that that little area is now being revolved on the other side of the y-axis. It's like a circle that's going around. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to look like a nice um, circle on the outside. But on the inside, we're going to have two circles. So we're going to have the smaller circle, and we're also going to have the larger circle. And we only care about the area in between. And so this is why it's called washer method, is because if you took a slice, it literally looks like a washer. So let's go ahead and talk about our radiuses. So the big R we know is going to go all the way out to the furthest function, which is x. But we're revolving around the y-axis, which means we want to integrate in terms of y, right? Because this is going to go all the way from the y-axis all the way out to our function. This is big R. So I don't want it in terms of x. I want it in terms of y. So actually, well, x is equal to y. Let's go and find our little r. That's going to be very similar, but we're only going out to this guy right here. So this little r is equal to 2x. So let's go ahead and solve for y. We have y is equal to 2x. We can divide both sides by 2 in order to get y divided by 2 is equal to x. So here we get little r is equal to y divided by 2. So let's go ahead and set up our integral. So here we want volume is equal to that pi hangs out and we are starting at zero and we're going all the way up to six, right? Because we're adding all of those cross sections together. And so here we want big R squared. So big R is equal to Y. So we get Y squared minus little r squared. So that becomes Y squared divided by four dy. So now that we have this all set up, we can actually, um, let's just go ahead and subtract those. So that becomes 3y squared divided by 4. If you wanted to, that's a constant multiple. You can just bring it out. So we get 3 pi over 4. And we're taking the antiderivative of y squared dy. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we can go ahead and simplify so those 3s cancel out. And so we get pi over 4 on the outside. And let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower to y cubed. So we get 6 cubed minus 0 cubed. That's nice. It goes away. So we get pi over 4 times 216, and we can go ahead and uh, see if that divides. So 21, 4, 5, 20, 16, oh yeah, 54. So here we get 54 pi, and that right there represents our volume. We have two functions here, e to the x divided by 2 and e to the negative x divided by 2, and we also have our bounds between natural log of 2 and natural log of 3. So let's go ahead and draw this out. First, I'm going to go ahead and draw um, e to the x divided by 2. I know when I plug in 0, I'm going to get 1. So I'm going to hit the y x-axis right here. And this is an exponential function that grows positively. And then here for um, negative e to the x divided by 2, I also know when I plug in 0, I get 0. But this is going to be decaying, right? So it's going to do something like this. And then what we're doing is we are integrating between the natural log of 2 and the natural log of 3. Those are just estimates. So let's go ahead and identify the area that we're actually revolving, and that's going to be this thing inside here. So what that's going to do is also be on this side, like this. Okay, I try to draw that a little better. We can draw our circles to see the 3D version of it. This left side is going to look like this, right? The right side is going to look like this. <laughs> I don't know if that was helpful. Okay, let's go and talk about our circle. So here we have the hole, which is a smaller circle right here, and this is e to the negative x divided by 2. And then let's talk about our bigger circle. So that's going to go all the way to the outside like this. And that's going to go all the way out to e to the positive x divided by 2. So let's identify our little r. Little r is equal to e to the negative x divided by 2. Big r is equal to e to the x divided by 2. And of course, we already have our bounds, natural log of 2 and natural log of 3. Sorry if that was a terrible drawing. It's not the best. So here we can set up our volume integral. We have pi, and we start at natural log of 2. We're ending at natural log of 3. Here when we have big R squared, we have x divided by 2 quantity squared. We multiply the exponents, and we just end up with e to the x. So we get e to the x minus e to the negative x dx. So let's go ahead and actually take the antiderivative. 
this becomes e to the x, and that becomes negative e to the negative x, but when we subtract a negative, that becomes positive between natural log of 2 and natural log of 3. So let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. And we're going to do lots of simplification, so this becomes pi. Those natural logs in e cancel out, so that becomes 3 plus that negative becomes an exponent, so that becomes 3 to the negative 1, or 1 third. And now we subtract, that becomes 2, and that becomes 2 to negative 1, which is 1 half. But we are subtracting it, right? So that becomes minus 1 half. So that becomes 1 plus 1 third minus 1 half. Let's go ahead and rewrite it all um, with a denominator of 6. So that becomes pi times, and then 6 plus 2 is 8, minus 3 equals 5, 6. Or if you wanted, you could rewrite that as 5 pi divided by 6. And that right there represents our volume. Here we have one more, sine of x and the square root of sine of x between 0 and pi over 2, and we're revolving this around the x-axis. So everything's going to stay in terms of x, which is very nice. But first, we're going to do um, between 0 and pi over 2. So we're going to go all the way up like this. And that right there is going to be our sine. And then that, the square root of sine of x is going to be a bit bigger, because when we take the square root of a fraction, it's a bit bigger of a number. So we can see the area that we're revolving. It's going to be everything between these two functions. So if you didn't want to try to redraw it, you don't have to, but I'm going to try. That's terrible, but you know, you get the idea, right? It's going to be everything in between here, and we're going to be revolving this around the x-axis, so we have a circle like this. Don't you love my drawings? Okay, let's go and identify big R and little r. So we can see little r is going to be sine of x, right? It's going to represent this inside little circle. And then we have big R is going to be the square root of sine of x, which is going to be this circle right in between here. So here we can go ahead and set up our integral. So we have volume is equal to pi. This is going to be between 0 and pi over 2. And we have big R squared. That's going to be just sine of x. And we're going to subtract sine squared of x. So here, in order to simplify this, we're going to have to use a trig identity. So I'll go ahead and rewrite this. Okay, so here we're going to go ahead and take the antiderivative. And so this becomes cosine of x, and that is negative cosine of x. That becomes minus x divided by 2. That becomes a plus. But when we take the antiderivative of cosine, yeah, that stays plus because we get, we get sine of 2x divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, and this is between 0 and pi over 2. So I will go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. Woo, okay, so here, let's see, what is equal to 0? Sine of pi is equal to 0, that's 0. Sine of 0 is equal to 0. And so let's go ahead and rewrite this. So we have pi times cosine of pi over 2 is also 0, actually. I missed that. So that becomes negative pi over 4. Cosine of 0 is equal to 1. And we have subtracting a negative, so that becomes plus 1. And then I would just go ahead and leave it like that. If you wanted, you could rewrite that as pi minus pi squared divided by 4. But that right there would be our final solution. So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it. So make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.